in this video we're going to import some CAD data and then some bill of material data and then we'll show you how to export out um, fixturing information um, the first thing we'll do is we'll import a CAD file and with the Unisoft software it will uh, read every importable file in your folder and subfolders and then it uh, puts it in a nice list um, with the best files towards the top typically for test you're going to want to get XY pin definitely netlist and uh, trace information is uh, is also really good to have and we can e read in pretty much any type of format Fabmaster Cadence, GenCAD, IPC, Valor, PCAD, uh, let's see, GenCAD, Mentor Graphics, Pads, Tango, CAD Star, uh, even the old very best, uh, OrCAD, uh, PCAD, um, Altium Designer, Cadence Allegro. And then you can also read in Gerber files if you need to. Uh, typically, you want to stay away from Gerber files, but if that's all you have, you can read those in and add the intelligence back to the um, board. So we'll read in a uh, PCAT file and we'll import that data. Okay. And the next thing we do is uh, we'll import the BOM information. And we have a programmable bomb input so you can essentially create your own templates for the type of data structure in your bomb we'll import that and you'll you'll notice here that the software it cross checks the cad against the bomb and the bomb against the cad finds duplicates um, parts that shouldn't be there etc and uh, list them all out so you, you'll be sure that your bomb is uh, clean when you bring it in. The Unisoft software has um, a lot of features. We're going to focus today on the um, test fixture uh, information. Okay, you basically have all your part numbers, device types, quantities, um, surface indicators, your bill of material information is all absorbed in, in the database. So you can work with that as needed. Um, we're going to be working mainly off of this test fixture menu. You can typically program your test equipment multiple ways. Uh, we can program standard in-circuit ATE where you need a bed of nails test fixture. We can program flying probe systems where uh, you have probes that are uh, being repositioned across the board and we can also output various standardized files so that we can, so that you can um, import those into existing test software such as uh, Teradyne, Genrad, D2B Alchemist, or Fabmaster Test Expert. So essentially, you can bring in all different types of file and export out uh, different formats if you if you wish. What I'm going to do at this point is design a bed of nails test fixture and that's done from this sub menu. Um, the, uh, depending on if you're multiplexed or pure pin, um, you can set your nets, for example, if you're pure pin Paradigm or other type of system. You can set your I.O. here, set your exclude range, you can force I.O. Let's say we want uh, 
to exclude IO 1 through 15, 0 through 15. We want to force A ground on 0 and VCC on 1. We can do that and it will renumber the IO range. Here. Okay, and if we go back up to the top, we notice that the first net jumps to 16 because we excluded the range. And then we force to 0, jump to 17, and VCC is at 1. If you're a multiplexed ATE, then obviously you wouldn't have to worry about that step. Um, the next thing we can do is we can convert NCs if we wish, kill hidden nets, uh, import a net list. So that's handy if you're going to try to save test fixturing, for example, from a different test um, ATE manufacturer and you want to switch it over to a new manufacturer you can force the I.O. so that the wiring stays the same. You can also convert NCs which is very convenient. Um, what it does is it allows you to take any nets that are not in the net list from the CAD data. These would be single pin nets that are not in the net list and it forces an assignment to each one of the nets. Uh, by forcing that then it goes into the algorithm to calculate if that pr uh, particular net is accessible. If you didn't do that then it wouldn't be a probe wouldn't be assigned you wouldn't get electrical test on that particular net. The next thing we'll do is we'll do our nail rank. And nail rank allows you to specify how you want to uh, assign your probes. We're going to say no SMT, uh, make the highest uh, uh, points our reference, uh, no bottom side with top, no through hole bottom side with top side access, spacings a two rating, number of pins and densities are least important. The next thing we'll do is assign our probes. The first category is normally 100 mil probes, second category is 75, third category 50 mil probes. So what we're saying here is that 85 and above we're going to place a 100 mil probe. So what the software does is when it attempts to analyze a point it looks at the nearest collision and in this case if it was over 85 and it met the other criteria then it would uh, conceivably assign a probe to that point point. and uh, if we want to do 75 mil probes then anything between 65 and 85 would be assigned a 75 mil probe uh, and, and uh, 35 to 65 would be a 50 mil probe and our minimum spacing would be 25 mils. It would disallow anything under that. Of course it would try to do the 100 mil probes first. Now we're ready to design the fixture. So basically we go to automatic. Automatic will visit every single network on the board and attempt to uh, um, assign a test probe. Uh, there's a window that comes up. This window will allow us, if we want, to force uh, probes onto particular points. So for example, we could specify J wildcard and then any connector would get a probe first. So for example, if we wanted to probe this connector to get the shorts testing, the opens testing on this run, we would assign the probe here first, uh, as long as it didn't violate any other criteria. 
Next we're going to take a look at our fixture analysis and what the fixture analysis does is will tell us the results of the automatic assignment. Come in here, the 999 category are all the no connect nets. So since we didn't assign any no connects, uh, the 999s uh, will be assigned to those. I believe there were 67 on this particular board. We take a look at one uh, net number 199. We see that no probe was assigned. We can click detail and it tells us that U3, pin 11, and 12 did not receive a probe on that net and the reasons are 1 and 8 and if we look at the legend that's surface mount top side access only um, so in this case you would want to run the board early on for a testability fixtureability review this would come out as a no access top side access only net and you'd probably send it back to the CAD department to be um, to, for them to drop a test point, test via on the bottom side to get access to this point. We can add, remove probes as needed. Um, and then our final thing that we'll do if we're going to actually fab the files, we'll build the fixture files. Basically, builds a standard set of fixturing files. And we'll take a look at those. One of the files is an FBS. And that's kind of the main file for for bottom side uh, bottom side probing. So here's our 85 mil section, which is 100 mil and above. These points are through hole, and they would be drilled. It would be a single operation, a drilled, and then it would be taped over. Uh, these would be a three-step operation. It'd be drilled they would be a probe 85 and above which is our 100 mil category would be inserted and then it would be wired back to the test head at 233 we have a report file that's generated and at the bottom of the report file we have uh, all the probe quantities for each size and we have all the drill through holes so this data can be used to quote your fixture at a price also we have a complete breakdown of every net and any nets that fail for example U3 pin 11 and 12 2 of 2 were non probable uh, will be listed You would now take these files and send them to the fixture fabrication house. The next thing we would do is generate the uh, description file for the tester. We do the Genrad, HP, Teradyne, and most of the standard end circuit. You would uh, select the tester you want. And we're going to output the description file. Save it. We'll go take a look at that file. And it's your standard description file that you would uh, import into your test equipment. 
as I mentioned earlier you can also create um, flying probe outputs and that's usually done from this menu um, the thing that we do in the Unisoft software is we actually calculate the uh, range for shorts that you want which is a a real good feature because in flying probe you want to keep your shorts testing as short as possible um, and uh, we do that by calculating the maximum distance for shorts that you want to allow so that minimizes the amount of travel the probes then the uh, the final way that you can program your test equipment is to just generate a uh, an output such as this GenCAD file or a FabMaster file or a PADS or a Mentor Neutral. Thank you.